See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You'll be a vessel that God is worth. Because you somebody might need your holy prayer to save them when they Hi, this is Dr. Will Wheat, and today we're talking about the at one minute with the Godhead. At one minute with the Godhead. Today we want to uh, attack the thought or the suggestion that when you became a Christian, God changed your life. I know that most of my Christian life, most of my Christian walk with God, subconsciously there was a subliminal suggestion that once I became a Christian, that God has changed my life. So I look forward to my behavior changing. But that's not true. Uh, when I recognize that what God has done for me in Christ Jesus, in me recognizing that, I also now recognize that the initiator of my salvation, as we spoke on the last video, is God and not myself. I didn't have to do anything. God initiated my salvation for me. So now as we progress with this thought, uh, and we come to the topic or the suggestion that when we became a Christian, or when I confessed Christ as my Lord and Savior, that God changed my life. Well, that's not right. Uh, people typically interpret the idea that God changed their lives to mean that it's a behavior change that happens at salvation. We used to be sinful in our actions as unbelievers, but now we are walking the straight and narrow. The old timers used to call this getting religion, and they were absolutely right. Because religion is about changing your behavior, but grace is altogether something different. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. Now this word that is that's translated gain has many um, uh, meanings to it, and one of it is to renew or to substitute. Well, when the missionary Hudson uh, Taylor was reading this verse and meditating on it, he came away with a brand new, fresh revelation about what this verse meant to him and to all of humanity. His revelation was that we have an exchange life and not a changed life. In Romans chapter 6, verse 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. In Romans chapter 6, also in verse 3, it says, Do you not know that as many as us, as were baptized into Christ, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, into Christ Jesus, was baptized into his death, into his death? Ephesians tells us that we were dead in our trespasses and in our sins. So what can you do for a dead man? You can bathe him, you can wash him, you can cleanse him, you can prompt him up, but he's a dead person. And all of that bathing and cleansing and prompting up does not change his condition. The Ephesians tells us that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. So what do we need? We need resurrection and we needed an exchange life. You have died and your life is hid in Christ. When Christ who is our life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. That's Colossians chapter three, verses three and four. Do you see the importance of making the decision between your life being exchanged versus it being uh, changed. The former, the, the, the exchange uh, suggests that you are simply uh, improved. Uh, the being changed, I should say, suggests that you have just simply been improved on. There was something wrong with you, you got cleaned up, you got straightened up, and now you will go your way. And every time you sin, you go back, you repent, and you ask God to fix what's wrong with you. There's a sense of never hitting it, never getting it exactly right, 
needing something else fixed, needing to concentrate more on God. But see, when you live like that, you're under constant stress and constant condemnation because you're looking to yourself to be the source of your salvation. But when you recognize the revelation and the truism that you're not living a changed life, but an exchanged life, then your source becomes Jesus Christ. He lives in you. It's Christ in you. In fact, uh, Christ lives as you even now. So because he's there in you, you're drawn directly from his life. The scripture tells us in John, as we read last week, that in him was life. And the life that's in him was the light of men. See, he is our life. And by him being in us, we have his life. So our life has not been just merely changed, it's been exchanged. Now, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, it says, um, He came to put away, uh, I'm sorry, he, he put sin away by the sacrifice of himself. Sin has been put away by the sacrifice of himself. As far as the east from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, that's Psalms 103, verse 12. And in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 21, it says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God. So not only did he take sin away, not only did he give us an exchange life, he has given us his righteousness. So Jesus' righteousness is now our righteousness. This is a wonderful clarity. When you're thinking soberly, you have no more excuse. You have full confidence that God is for you. You know because he's living in you that he's never separated from you. You also know that if you are living as Christ in this world, you were not born a sinner who was saved by grace. You come to realize since Christ was the last Adam, Okay, and when he died, the last Adam died, and the curse that was with Adam died as well. When he raised from the grave, there was a new creation, and you were in him when he raised from the grave, and this life that was his is now yours. So there has been an exchange in your life. There's a new creation, and this is of God. So from that point, from the raising of Christ from the dead, you're no longer a sinner. You're actually a saint because you have been redeemed to your original innocence in Christ Jesus. Saints, I want you to remember, it is not what you do for God, it's what God has done for you. It's not what you believe about God, it's what God believes about you and the finished work of the cross, what was finished. So when there's only one faith to consider here, and that's God's faith in the finished work of the cross, that all men were inclusive in this salvation. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to understand that you're not living just a changed life that can be dirtied and solved at any moment, but you're living an exchanged life. Not a changed life only, but an exchanged life. And living an exchanged life, the power of God is resident in you. God has a relationship with you, and God loves you, and God is for you. And remember, when God is for you, there's nothing that can separate you from his love. Nothing and no one can be against you. Well, we're at the end of our time, but I want you to remember from this time to the next that God has plans for your life and none of those plans include defeat. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. NCCFC.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC. NCCFC. NCCFC.